So let's just play around a little bit. Um, I'm only going to use, uh, starting out with Burnt Umber mixed with Ultramarine Blue. That will give me a dark to work with. And let's say we're doing, you know, a background. What you want to do is paint in the entire area with a dark color. Okay, and we're going to pretend here. Let's say we have like palm tree, um, pine trees. Okay, and then maybe we have some kind of other tree going on here. So the first thing you want to do, let's say this is the horizon line back here. Maybe we have some kind of like mountain. All right. Let me move that up, I'm sorry. Okay. So we have this mountain in the background and this is our horizon line. Then we have this group of trees. Okay. So what you're doing is just painting in the basic shape of this whole mass of trees. Okay. All right. Now, from here, you can begin to create the shape of the trees. So you're starting with a dark value, the ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber or raw umber or burnt sienna. I mix those two to create a dark, okay? And um, I never use black, especially when I was beginning painting. Just leave the black off your palette and, um, and use these colors. So the other thing that you need to notice is that everything that's coming up you know, is not like this. They're not evenly shaped. This shape is different from this shape. This height is different from this height. Everything needs to be different. You do not want repeating shapes. If you have repeating shapes, uh, the composition becomes boring to the eye. Also, it's not just one straight line across. It may look like a straight line when you're looking at the photo reference or if you're looking at the scene uh, out in the field. But you can see here we have here and then this comes out a little bit more. It goes back in, it goes back. And it's this undulating line, okay? The trick is do not repeat your shapes. So we have this going on. Now, if we want, we can add, you know, begin to make it greenish looking. But remember, uh, remember that you do not want to use green. And, and if they get really, if it gets really green, it you know, it just doesn't work. And again, you don't want the these uh, greens to be everywhere the same. So I'm going to make these two pine trees, maybe this one over here as well. Okay, so when we are using green mixtures, I don't ever use an actual green from the painting tube. There's always a mix and I'm basically mixing 
uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber, and yellow ochre, or an orangey yellow, just some kind of orangey yellow for the basic colors. Uh, because if you just use yellow and blue to make a green, the green will be too strong and you must gray it down somehow. So let me get some paint out on my palette. Just give me a moment as we go through this. Burnt Sienna is a really beautiful color to use uh, in your trees, especially for pine trees. Now, even though pine trees are evergreen trees, are greenish, you have to be very, very care careful in a painting how you make your trees. Here's something else that you need to see or that you need to understand. And that is that even though a pine tree or an evergreen looks the same on this side as this side, you do not want to paint it that way. Like here, I think I'll put the trunk right about there. You see, so most of the tree is coming off on one side. Uh, if you have the branches coming up over here, don't put them up over here. Uh, even if the, the trunk, if you put it coming down in the center, right? Uh, and here, this will be a fatter tree. that's blending into this one basically. And yes, I would put uh, little dabs of the colors in other areas as well. Okay, do you see how that's coming along? Let me move a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm not going to get too detailed here, but I'm going to mix some yellow ochre, or you can mix a dull orangey yellow if you're make, mixing your own colors uh, into this area here maybe here and everything that you do is about layering layer one uh, area over another. Here, look at this um, nice green. And this is just ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. Raw sienna, if you're using those earth tones, will also work well. Again, you can just mix your own. You do not want greens. Do you see how um, you know, how gray down this green is, but it can be, uh, a beautiful color to use.
Okay. So depending where these trees are, in your in your landscape uh, if these ones here are supposedly you know in the mid ground to foreground so there's uh, the shadow colors will be warmer they won't be a, a purpley color they'll be a warmer uh, I use blue and burnt sienna for the shadow colors See how that works? Okay, um, I'm not going to get too de detailed in this so I can finish this up for you. There will be a spot where a couple of areas where you want to add highlights. Highlights don't always mean that you're going to use uh, a high value or add white to um, to the area. You know, let's say this is our highlight area. You can also add a, a, a stronger color. So a, this was just a mix of yellow and red to make an orange and to use that as a highlight area. You don't want to use, if you do that, you don't want to use it everywhere. You want it just on your the tree that you want everybody to see. And of course you can add then in the tree colors that you used before to add, um, you know, little uh, spots of light the sun is coming this way so i have some things here but i'm not going to use that strong orange that i had there okay do you see how that works That's generally how, um, how you create a tree or a tree shape. Even if it's just one tree, you know, let's go over here and make a tree. We'll just go over this here. Let's say it's like a, and here would be, oops, I guess, well, I started doing it this way as a shadow. So this would be your shadow area. Let's say you're doing that. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, the trunk would be a lot thinner. So let's say this is the ground and this is a shadow okay do you see what we're doing here starting with um, with the general shapes so now down here where the trunk meets the ground is your darkest area the darkest area and everything going upwards then the shadow areas will be lighter you're not going to put the same color up here okay and why is that well it is because more light is coming in up here in the tops of this tree. There's more light everywhere. Down here, because this is a hard trunk, 
against the ground. This area here is going to be very dark. There's just very, very little light that is bouncing down and reflecting back onto the back side of this tree trunk. Okay, do you understand me? I hope I'm being clear. So up here, everything is going to be lighter. We won't have dark, um, dark colors. So let's say we lighten up, go to the front, the light side of the trunk. could be that all right and just mixing up some color just some browns greenish browns So here's, can you see that? Again, it's a very muddy, uh, dull green. And that's what you want to use, especially in the back areas where the shadows are. Some areas you can add more blue green because blue is cool and everything in shadow is basically cool. Okay, so you can see how that's coming out. It's coming forward a little bit. And again, you know, I'm not doing a round tree. It's coming up and here and here and here and here. Do you see? You do not do round shapes. Even though the tree might look round, you have to make it more interesting for, um, for the eye. Do you see that? Okay, so I suggest that you take the time and look at a mass of trees either with a photo reference or um, or with anything I mean or outside uh, it'd be much better if you went outside and did this but photo references are fine and just paint in the basic mass the basic shape of the entire area and then begin to break it up don't do the same thing over and over, like the same size trees. All of these are different. In fact, if I were really going to be painting this, I would, um, I would put another one, like not right in the center here, but you know, maybe leaning, you know, a little bit down here. Um, Again, putting in the shadows. I would do that first, actually. Now I'm getting sloppy. <laughs> Let me fix that up a little bit. It's a bit much. You know, you can just kind of scrape in some. And the tree trunks, you don't want them to all be the same. This is a little baby tree. Tree trunk there.
Okay. Give it a go. Put in the basic shape in your dark sh in your shadow color in your dark color, and then add on top and bring the trees forward. You can bring uh, you can put some trees in the back by adding um, uh, lightening the shadow color. And the farther back you go, the more blue things will get, or more purple things will get. Uh, you lose the warm colors the farther back you go. So let's say I'm in the distance here and I want to add a tree back here. It's still too dark. So if I put in trees in the background, You're not going to spend a lot of uh, time. The trees in the background, you can you don't see the detail on them, so don't add them. Just make it a a mass. Um, I'm mixing some color here, right? So let's say this is a just a, you know trees towards the back. And um, okay, and you can keep working with that and going over and over. You can bring uh, warmer colors towards the front. If you wanted to add, you know, a little spark of color, you know, let's say you did some kind of grass or and you can incorporate the colors that you're using throughout um, throughout the different areas. Just don't make it everywhere so that it's it's confusing for for people to see what it is and where it is on the painting if it's in you know the foreground or if it's farther back in the background there you can add a little bit if you want to bring one tree farther forward in the background and the other to stay behind you see how that works and you create all these different layers within one little tree mass. Okay? All right then, I'm gonna leave you with that. Go paint some trees and send me, uh, send me what you did.